So Stuart Varney is probably the most pompous Fox host that there is. And he went after Bernie Sanders' jobs bill in the dumbest way imaginable. I call it a vote-buying operation. Vote for me and look what you'll get. Politicians handing out taxpayer money because they think it will win your vote. The Washington Post reports that Senator Bernie Sanders is working on a jobs program that falls into the category of vote buying, that's my opinion. He wants the government to guarantee a job for anyone who wants or needs one, which will pay $15 an hour with benefits. A government guaranteed government job run by a vast government bureaucracy. Apart from Bernie's need to attract attention and votes, do we need a government jobs program in a fully employed economy? And who pays for it? Then there is the universal income idea. Democrat presidential candidate Andrew Yang was on this show yesterday advocating $1,000 a month payment from the government to every adult aged 18 to 64. Do what you like with the money. You just get it. At least Mr. Yang was honest enough to admit that it would be paid for with a 10% national sales tax. You get the point. Vote for me and look what you'll get. Not only is this economic nonsense, it's also, in my opinion, grossly immoral. Since when has it been OK to seize your money that you work for so it can be handed out by politicians to other people? Granted, some form of income transfer is legit. I'm not railing against the income tax. But the scale of what the left proposes takes income transfer to a whole new level. By the way, the top 20% of income earners already pays 87% of federal income taxes. And wealthy people in many states already lose more than half their income. And the left wants more. As I've said many times, I've been here before. I've lived in socialist economies, and it's not much fun for anyone. If America goes for these guaranteed jobs or guaranteed income programs, we will be reversing our own history and will look much more like Europe, a large, go-nowhere museum. And by the way, there will be no turning back. Once you've got a government program, whether it's immoral nonsense or not, you've always got that government program. The left will have bought those votes Forever. Okay, there's a bunch of hilarious stuff to point out here. Like, for example, that last point where he says there's no turning back once you go down this path. Yeah, why is that, Stuart? Why, why would there be no turning back after you go down that path? Here's the answer. Because it will be wildly popular. You know, the, this is the same stuff that these guys say about Medicare and Social Security. They say that stuff now. They're like, oh, yeah, we need to reform, but God, it's so hard to reform it. Why? Because they're the most popular programs in the country. So that's not really an argument for your side here, Stuart. It's the opposite. It's an argument for the side of the people who are for it. Like, believe me, if we do this, you guys are going to love it so much, you're not going to want to look back. Exactly. That's the point. That's the point. And then that gets to his initial point, his first point. He calls it a vote-buying operation. You mean... democracy? And being popular? And what's hilarious is that Stuart Varney... See, is there a problem with vote-buying? The answer is absolutely, but vote-buying, that is for specific special interests who paid you off. And that's what our entire system is based on. It's an oligarchy, it's a corporatocracy, it's a kleptocracy. So you have corporations and billionaires give money to the politicians, then the politicians legislate in favor of those people. See, that's a problem, that's corruption. Now, on the flip side, what we're talking about here is a policy proposal that polls well, that the American people want and would really, really like, and that, that's how democracy is supposed to work. You're supposed to propose things not for your special interests who paid you off, that's corruption. You're supposed to propose things that are popular for the entire country, that's democracy. But he inverts everything and he says, no, if you're doing something that's popular for the entire country, in the entire country, that's a vote-buying operation. No, that's called being a politician and doing what your fucking job is, which is representing the people and coming up with ideas that they'd really like. God, it's so funny. He's... He's such an elitist. He's such an elitist, this guy. Okay, then... This, you know, one of the points I can't get out of my mind when listening to these guys talk about Bernie's idea, and Bernie's idea 
is, um, you know, a job guarantee. So if you want to work, you can get a job and it pays $15 an hour and it gives you full uh, health care benefits. This is something that FDR proposed in his new Bill of Rights, his economic Bill of Rights. This is like a very social democratic proposal. And what's hilarious is look at the Republican rhetoric during election years. They always talk about how they're the party in favor of jobs. Like that's our whole thing. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And then Bernie comes along and goes, I agree, let's do a job for everybody. They go, oh, how dare you? Oh, jobs. That's a terrible idea. I'm totally anti-job. What the fuck? Now, I get it because they would respond and say, hey, but we're for jobs. We mean in the private sector, not the public sector. But here's the problem with that, Stuart. When you leave it to the private sector, there's always going to be an unemployment rate and there's always going to be millions of people who don't have a job. So under your ideal system, you want millions of people unemployed? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? At least be honest and say that. At least say, listen, I'm an ideologue, so I prefer the private sector no matter what. And even when the outcome is worse, namely, we'll have millions of people unemployed no matter what we do, even in times where unemployment's at a lower rate than it normally is. I'm for that. I'm fine with that. At least be honest and say that, but he doesn't say that. He'll try to frame it like he's the pro-job guy, but then when somebody comes along and says, I agree, let's have a job for everybody, he goes, Oh, I can't believe you'd say that. And then, even the shitting on um, UBI, that's really interesting, universal basic income. Because what he's not telling you is, most, um, most proposals of UBI, it's one version or another of eliminating the the current social safety net, getting rid of all the different government programs that we have right now, if you get rid of that and give everybody un a universal basic income, so basically a social security check for everybody, and the idea behind that is simplify the social safety net, simplify the bureaucracy, and also get the money to everybody in a way that's universal and fair in the, mind, in the eyes of some people. Okay, but he frames it like, like, oh, giving everybody a check, that's so radical. That's so radical. Well, what we have right now is a social safety net system, which does something similar to that, and a universal basic income system kind of it takes it away from being a welfare program and makes it a universal program that everybody can get the benefits of. So, for those of you who don't know, Milton Friedman, for example, a big-time libertarian, he was somebody who was in favor of universal basic income for these reasons I'm laying out here. So he just, like, he has this scorn towards these concepts, and he doesn't really understand the concepts. It's just, to him, it's like, oh, free money. Evil wrong. Well, free money. You want to talk about free money? Okay, let's talk about free money. How about, do you say it's wrong? Do you say it's welfare when you have uh, people who are mega rich, who are billionaires, who get to pass off all of their money to their spoiled little brat kids who haven't worked a day in their life. See, when it comes to those people, he says, oh no, they should be able to pass off every single penny. Why? Those kids didn't work for it. Those kids didn't work for it. So, to a guy like Stuart Varney, if you are a single mother and you need some food to feed your fucking kids, so you need food stamps, the SNAP program, he thinks, oh, that's welfare. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But if you're a spoiled little brat kid who's never worked a day in his life and your dad's a billionaire, he goes, no, that's not welfare if you get all your dad's money. So in other words, he's against something like the estate tax. Does he consider it free money when, you know, uh, corporations and billionaires pay a lower tax rate than working people? No, he doesn't. He thinks that's a wonderful idea. He was for the Trump tax cuts. So he's, he's really confused and he's really elitist, and his opinions are always in favor of the rich. And then, um, the final point is, I love how he's, he slips in there this idea of like, oh, we're so unfair to the rich. They already pay the, this giant bulk of the taxes. What does he not tell you? He doesn't tell you that they make even more of the money. He's he really is genuinely doing the, uh, you know, woe are the rich argument here. Like, oh, uh, when are we going to give the rich a break? Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, we live in a world where the richest six people have more wealth than the bottom 50% of the planet. Six people have more than, like, 3.5 billion people. And this guy's out there like, oh, they want to take your hard-earned money. It's, but that's the point. 
We don't live in a meritocracy, you fucking jackass. You know, Jeff Bezos has over a hundred billion dollars. Does he work that much more and that much harder than a surgeon or a construction worker? Surgeon makes like what? Let's say $500,000 a year, which is solid. Construction worker making like 60 grand a year, you know, working nine to five, backbreaking work. Is it really the case that, oh, well, Jeff Bezos just worked that much hard? No, it's not. That's not the fucking case. Of course, that's not the case. This idea, this childish notion that like, oh, when you look at how much money people have, that's obviously a reflection on their character. And that obviously shows you their moral fiber. And he literally frames it like that. He goes, it's immoral to take that money. It's immoral. It's immoral to have a progressive tax system, which every developed country in the world has to one extent or another. And then finally, he shows you what he's really all about. He says, I've lived in these socialist hell holes before. What do we want to be more like Europe? <gasps> yeah, you fucking idiot. That's exactly what we want to do. That doesn't land like you think it lands. He acts like, you know, he just dropped a bomb on everybody. Like, what do you want to be more like Somalia? You're talking about Europe. When you look, when you objectively quantify and measure these things, despite your own personal opinion, because I don't give a fuck about your opinion, when you look at the data, it shows very clearly that, especially um, in Scandinavia, you have way better quality of life, they self-report being much happier, they have objectively better uh, healthcare systems, the middle class gets treated better, they have more vacation time, uh, you go on and on, they just... Uh, in virtually every objectively measurable way, they're kicking our ass. So, and they're social democracies. So they're further left on the spectrum. So when you do your fear mongering of like, I've lived in these hell holes. They're terrible. What do we want to be more like the places that are empirically better? Yeah, jackass, that's exactly what we want to do. Can you imagine spending your time fear mongering over the idea that if you want, you should have a job? <laughs> imagine fear mongering over that. As opposed to talking about shit that matters, you know, shit that, you know, it actually is negative. Like the fact that we're bombing eight different countries right now and half of workers in America make $30,000 a year or less. Or the fact that, you know, climate change is seriously fucking us up at the moment. And, you know, there's been a giant increase in disastrous weather events and natural disasters. It, can you imagine not talking about all of those really, really serious issues and fear-mongering over this idea that if you want a job, you should be able to get one. <laughs>